It's a Welcome to Golden Speakers Toastmasters Club. I am Emory Styron, serving as president for tonight in the absence of our higher ups. We are the Golden Speakers. We meet every Tuesday night here at the Fairfield High V at the end of the ice cream aisle. The mission of a Toastmasters Club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth, and we have fun doing it. So I'd like at this point to ask you to silence your cell phones. A reminder that's hitting home with some. And I'd also look around and see if we have any guests. I don't believe we do. So we're all home folks. I'd like to now turn the meeting over to our Toastmaster for the evening, Will Burns. Thank you, Emery. Meeting theme tonight is a Midsummer Night's Dream. With a quote, a very apt quote, from William Shakespeare. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. We have an exciting meeting tonight, so without further ado, but with much ado about something, it's a pleasure to call up our timer to the report, Ryan Ponamiller. Well, yes, it's been a while. Uh, my, my role tonight as a timer is to keep track of all the speeches, and there are only speeches between the time of five to seven minutes tonight, so I'll be putting the green light on at five, the yellow light on at six, the red light on at seven, and there is an evaluation portion of the meeting, which both speakers will be evaluated. Two minutes for green, two and 30 for yellow, three minutes for red, and then there's a table topics portion where each is a minimum of one minute and there's a maximum of two minutes. So just try to get past the one minute mark. We're all familiar with that. And then they're all, all speeches tonight have a 30 second grace period. So if you pass 30 seconds past the red light, you will be disqualified. But if you do make it within that 30 seconds, your speech will qualify. I will give a report at the end of the meeting. That's, um, yes, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. And now our audiovisual expert, also our grammarian tonight, Dan Craig. My role as the grammarian is to listen to the language used by the members during the meeting and make note of any exceptionally good or bad usage, and to give a report at the end of the meeting about what I was, have observed. I also have the role of picking the word of the day I'd like to encourage everyone to try to use this when they're speaking. I've chosen tour de force. It means it's a noun. It means an exceptional performance or achievement. A sample sentence: the actor actor's work in the movie is a tour de force performance that captivates from the opening scene. Thank you. I'll give a report at the end. Thank you, Dan. Whatever she's doing, Jean Simonton Craig runs a very tight ship here at Toastmasters and out in the world at large. Tonight, as our awe counter, she'll keep us under control. <laughs> Tonight, I am the awe counter, and that means that I will be listening for and taking note of filler words. This is not something you want to have. You want to eliminate filler words. So filler words, the person with the low score wins. You're not going for high score. Filler words are things like ah, um, you know, so, but. Words that are 
you're linking things together that should have periods together like and, and, and. But there are some that are special. I will be listening for customized filler words, you know, or you know what I mean, or you feel me, or any of that kind of uh, personalized filler words that you all might be using. And I will be giving a report at the end of the meeting. Our reader joke master tonight is Susanna McCann, but we'll hear from her later on in the meeting. We're now moving on into the public speaking part of the meeting, what you would kind of expect if you came to a Toastmasters meeting. This is kind of, the, you know, this is what we build our, our reputation on, I guess you might say. And it's amazing to think that this is Fraser's fifth speech. He's been just blasting through the manuals here to introduce his fifth speech, which I Hope will be a tour de force. Mm. My pleasure to call up his evaluator, Amory Stein. Thank you, Will. However, I'm upset because I was planning to use that same term on, on the, that I am expecting Frazier to give us a tour de force. So you've got double expectations, but he stole my thunder. Fraser Jones hails from the beautiful island of Dominica in the Caribbean, or Caribbean, can you correct me on that, where he is, uh, was an avid electronics and computer hobbyist. He earned his BS in civil engineering at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies in Trinidad. After working as a civil engineer, in Dominica, he came to Maharishi University in 1988 and obtained an MS in computer science. He has been in Fairfield since that time. Tonight, uh, he will be doing Project 5 from the Competent Communicator Manual. Here's his objectives. To use stance, movement, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact to express his message and achieve his speech purpose, and two, to make his body language smooth and natural. He'll be speaking for five to seven minutes. Please welcome Frazier. His topic is making the impossible possible. Have you ever thrown out a suggestion to make something easier and more efficient, but in reality, it was much more complicated than you expected? Yeah. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, visitors, viewers at home. In 1987, I was working with a civil engineering consultancy in Dominica. Andrew, the other civil engineer, was discussing a problem he had with me. He figured out he could not prepare, have prepared the documents in time for a project because of all the revisions being done. So I told him, we should use a computer. I can get my computer from home. We enter everything in it, and you can make changes <coughs> without having to write the whole thing over again. So you ran that past the boss. The boss agreed. So I went home, created a template of the document it was, it was supposed to be entered. Next morning, I carried my computer to work, set it up, showed the secretary how to bring up the template, enter the data, and save. She was a little apprehensive. She said, I, I, I don't know anything about computer. I never touched a computer before. I told her, just treat it like a advanced typewriter <laughs> and and save often with that i 
left the office for a side visit. Now it was my turn to be apprehensive. What if the computer crashed? What if it hung up? The trip to the site and back was like torture. <laughs> as soon as I got back, I went to her desk. I was pleasantly surprised. She had several documents inputted. So at the end of the day, I print one out, and next morning, I carried it to my boss. He says, I want the document looking the same as all our documents. There were two problems. One, the overall look of the document. You know, the page number wasn't in the same place. And two, the character. It was a individual characters. It was a dot matrix printer. And you could see all the individual dots. It looked like crap. <laughs> Fortunately, I had a software library, an extensive software library. It's like having apps today, but in those days, it, had, it was on floppy disk. So for the overall look, I had an app for that. I load this up. I could bring the document into the Word processor, and any look I want, I could get. The car character. I had an app for that. Load this app up, print. The printout was indistinguishable from a typewriter. So at the end of the day, I print this out. Next morning, I carried it to my boss. Smile. Wow! I knew I had it exceeded his expectations. So I went back to my assigned project. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, the computer is out of memory. The secretary was working on a large document. And the memory was full. But you know, I had an app for that. Load this up. It, it took a part of my hard drive and converted it to memory. And she was able to complete the document, documents with no more problems. But actually, there was one more problem. <laughs> This was completed on, she completed on Friday. And the documents were required on Monday, all bound and ready to go. I didn't have a app for that. <laughs> Friday night, su Friday night to Sunday night, I was up. Printing, copying, <laughs> binding. And by Monday morning, when my colleagues came by, the best documents we ever produced <laughs> were all stacked up, ready to go. It was a real tour de force. True, it was much more complicated than I had expected. But the bliss of success was out of this world. Thank you. Please take two minutes and evaluate Fraser's speech. And now for our second speech, 
of the evening, which also happens to be Leslie's second speech here at this club. It's my pleasure to call up her evaluator, Louis Denbaum. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Club members, viewers at home. Tonight, Leslie Hollis will be giving her second speech. The topic is organize your speech. And her objectives are to select an appropriate outline which allows listeners to easily follow and understand her speech. Make her message clear with supporting material directly contributing to the message and use appropriate transitions when moving from one idea to another. Finally, create a strong opening and conclusion. Leslie's speech is called Eat and Be Happy. Leslie Hollis is a wannabe foodie considering the switch to a vegan diet. Please help me welcome Leslie Hollis. viewers at home. I want to talk to you about food. How do you feel about food? <coughs> Are you merely a consumer? Do you like food for enjoyment? Or do you like food to help build community? When I was a kid, food was mostly about nutrition. Eat this and you'll be well. Eat this and you'll be strong. So I ate my spinach. <laughs> I ate liver. I really liked liver. And I learned a lot from my family too. As we did build community, that way of eating together at the table. But it was always about nutrition. It wasn't about fun necessarily. Don't play with your food. Eat that and get going. We, we need to clean up. <laughs> and then I moved through school, went to college, and food became about enjoyment. Like, I can eat whatever I want, when I want, and I'll still be fine. So my quest was to enjoy food as much as possible to create new dishes, make new things. And all of these dishes were sweet, mostly, or fatty. Lots of meat. And now I'm on the third leg of my food journey. That idea of community is kind of falling apart for me. I have friends who love food, foodie friends, who eat anything and everything. And now I have new friends who only eat certain things. And trying to get these two groups together <laughs> has been a challenge. So again, going back around, one group is saying nutrition, these things are healthy for you. And the other group is saying we enjoy these foods. You know, why are you trying to take this away from us? And I'm in the middle of trying to decide how I can bridge those two things, nutrition and enjoyment, and keep my community. So I've been looking through some of my favorite things. If any of you don't know about this catalog, and you're not vegan, you should check it out. Zingerman. They have all kinds of cheese. All kinds of baked goods. Gift boxes you could order for people. And I looked through here and I thought, what, you know, what could I possibly get my vegan friends? And then 
I found this book buried under my other favorite books. <laughs> so going from chocolate souffle with lots of butter, love butter, to some healthy recipes and the most guilty pleasure ingredient in the whole thing is olive oil. <laughs> Which my vegan friends would still poo-poo. Not about the oil. Bad for the arteries. Yeah. So. I'm trying to get on board. Chow cheese. Non-dairy. Kind of disgusting, though. <laughs> It's whipped oil with a bunch of seasoning. So how is this better than cheese? And I've made some other transitions. Bibimbap, if any of you are familiar with Korean food. Yummy noodles, veggies, usually an egg, not for the vegan friends. But I've made a concession. I took the meat part out. So I can still bridge those two nutrition and enjoyment uh, paths. But I'm still having difficulty with pulling that community together because not only uh, are you dealing with the nutrition side and the, and the enjoyment side, the enjoyment of the food is to not think so much, right? And the nutrition side is bridging some of the ethical side. But I just want my friends to eat and be happy. And I want my friends to be with me and eat and be happy. So I'm doing my best to bridge the nutrition and the enjoyment. to make that possible. Please take two minutes to evaluate Leslie's speech. Brian, yes. which one of our speakers qualified tonight? Uh, both speakers qualified tonight. Their names, please. Leslie and Frazier. Please vote for Leslie or Frazier. Now we're into the second part of our three-part series here that comprises the Toastmasters meeting. While the evaluation section doesn't get all the glory that the speeches do, this is an essential part in giving us the feedback we all need to improve ourselves and to be better communicators, better leaders, and better people. To start us off with that, it's my pleasure to call up our first evaluator, Emery Styron. Do you not have the, oh, are you the general evaluator? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. That's that, what's that, going on. That, uh, I haven't looked at the agenda lately. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not giving a tour de force. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, viewers at home, and our guest, welcome guest, Frazier Speech. Frazier, especially you, uh, your mission was to use your body in speaking, and I think you did that pretty well. Uh, your topic selection uh, lent itself to expressive gestures. Who among us haven't been so frustrated with a computer we were ready to throw it across the room or pound our fists on the wall? Uh, your preparation, obvious that you uh, prepared very carefully. Your manner, and I'm going through the checklist in the manual, um, I put you somewhere between satisfactory and confident and enthusiastic. Your posture, you were poised, you were balanced. 
and your gestures, which to me is a lot of what this speech was all about. You used your hands a lot, and your hands are very expressive. And the longer you talk, the more looser you got with your hands. I saw uh, claps, head shakes, shrugs, um, a lot of this, and that was maybe a little too much of this. Uh, what I wanted to see was open it up, you know, throw your arms up, hang your head, drop to your knees, uh, you know, pace the floor, uh, just ham it up a little bit, especially in a speech uh, that, that is about using your body to speak. Body movement, I think we've just covered that. Uh, I would say that you tended to face this side of the stage. You got over here somewhat, but you didn't really turn and talk to this part of the audience very much. Eye contact, very good. Facial expression, animated, friendly, genuine. Your speech purpose was clear and your organization was chronological, you just told a story. So, uh, what could you have done differently? Wider use of stage, open up your gestures. Um, what did I like? I liked your expressive hands and voice. And I really liked the repetition of, I had an app for that. Yeah. And then the contrast, I didn't have an app for that. <laughs> So, overall, great speech. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Emery. Moving right along, it's my pleasure to call up our next evaluator, Louis Denbaum. Club members, and especially Leslie. It's my pleasure to discuss her tour de force tonight in front of us with her second speech. And I am going to use the manual. First, it's the speech value itself. Was it interesting and meaningful to the audience? What's more interesting and meaningful than food? We all have food challenges. We all have food questions and food issues. So your topic was quite appropriate. The preparation was excellent. You knew exactly where, what you were talking about. You had props. You flowed through from one section to the next with ease. Organization, logical and clear. Yes, absolutely logical and clear. I would recommend in the beginning, as you go through your Toastmasters uh, first few events, that you use the tell us what you're going to tell us, tell us, and then tell us what you told us. It's a, it's a standard way of organizing a speech. You can't go wrong with it. You started out with your introduction, I want to talk to you about food. I'd leave that out. You went into three or four really great questions. I'd go right for the questions, because I think that would captivate us more. You know, how many of you, how many of you, and I'd also add, to get us involved, ask us to do something. Raise your hand if, and that will, that will juice up the introduction a little bit more. The body. Uh, of the speech was great. You did something really uh, well for organizing it. You used chrono chronologically. You just moved from when I was in college, when I was this, when I'm now. And so, of course, it's going to have an organization that way. So that was a, a good way of organizing your speech. Conclusion. I'd like to see a stronger conclusion. It was almost like you had one sentence just to kind of Include, but make the conclusion a real part of the speech. And so ask for some kind of call to action. 
or remind us about what's going on. You know, how many of you now have some more things to think about when you leave here tonight about whether you're going to go for enjoyment or whether you're going to go for nutrition? Give us something to sum it up that involves us. What could the speech speaker have done better? Okay. And I, I'm not picking on you for this. This is a good for everybody here. I got a one sentence bio two minutes before you went on stage. Okay. So all of you write a really good bio. That's, the, that's part of your speech. It's the beginning of your speech. That's where your credibility comes in. So, and then send it to me two days, or you're evaluated two days before. Because if I'm going to fumble through your evaluation, you don't look good. Uh, I like the props. I like the magazine pages. I thought you could have uh, hammed it up a little. No, veganed it up a little bit more. <laughs> all in all, a great second speech. Good luck, and I look forward to more speeches from you. Lewis. One might think that at this point we would then vote for our favorite evaluator, but that's not the case. We have a whole other section here, an evaluation, and then we go right into the next part. Now is sort of the lighter, more off the cuff part of our meeting, the table topics. And to introduce that, it's my pleasure to call up our Table Topics Master, Orion Abrams. Uh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to say here, but I guess I have some questions. Um, and I, I don't have much of a theme for the questions. I just have a few kind of like random questions, um, I guess. Go ahead. Oh, would you like to? Okay. All right. Fantastic. Random. <laughs> uh, what most makes you smile and why? Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, viewers at home. I do a lot of smiling. Actually, during my day, it's almost the baseline, the smiling and enjoying my life. So I'm going to take it up a notch, and I'm going to say what makes me laugh, because that's just a little more intensive on the whole spike of the enjoyment phase. I actually... What am I? I'm over 30 for sure. I actually am finding some angles to my humor that just totally surprise me and that come out in all kinds of ways during the day. And I'm getting a lot of feedback from people, you are funny. You are really funny. And I'm just commenting. But they seem to really hit people in certain ways. And I am enjoying, I'm just being really open here about this. I am enjoying my humor at this stage of my life. And I like to hear, and what makes me laugh, is when I have somebody else who giggles over something that I've said. Because it just makes me feel like I've just given them something that makes them feel good. They're laughing. I did something. And I just am enjoying that. So a little, not so serious these days, I look at the world and I think, how can you not be saying humorous things? Because it's just otherwise, it's just time to slip, you know, cut your wrists or something. But stuff comes out, and I'm enjoying the laughter that I create for people, and then it makes me laugh as well. Else? All right, I'm ready. All right, I'm going to 
me give you a, a good one here. <laughs> so, uh, if you had to choose between three superpowers with curses, all right, which one would it be? One, two, or three. So the first one is you can, uh, you have x-ray vision, but it activates randomly, so you can never choose, it goes on and off, you can never choose when it happens. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is you can fly, but you can't ever touch anything. And the third one is you can go invisible for 30 seconds, but every time you go invisible, uh, you get teleported to a random location. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind to repeat that? <laughs> okay, so you have extra vision, uh, but you don't, you don't get to choose when it, when it activates, it just happens randomly. Um, you can fly, but you can't touch anything, and uh, <laughs> You can go invisible for 30 seconds, but every time you do, you get teleported to a random location in the world. Okay. Well, thank you, Orion, for giving me such an easy question. <laughs> well, I would choose the flying without being able to touch anything because you didn't say that I couldn't touch something when I landed or before I left. So it sounds to me like a freebie, a great way to get from one place to another. I don't need frequent flyer miles. I'll just fly anywhere I want to go. Uh, I have a sister-in-law who works for an airline as a ticket agent in, at the Little Rock Airport, and I'm jealous of her because she is able to fly just about any time she wants to, anywhere she wants, and she has a has a son-in-law and a daughter and, and grandchildren in Honduras, and she just pops down there, uh, like I might drive to uh, Iowa City. And so I really appreciate the gift of these superpowers because it's going to change my life. I'll be able to keep up with my sister-in-law, Leslie. Mr. Coachmaster, hey, Bobby. All right, anybody else? You guys scared now? Brian? Yeah. superpower, but also also had to have like an equally um, curse, bad curse, power, yeah. yeah. As, as bad as the power was good, what, what would you choose and why? What would so you I get to pick the curse and the superpower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Toastmasters, guests, guests, and viewers at home. Um, I have a moving company. It uh, is a and it's help people. I'm a service person. I help people move, so I'm you know it requires me to be in awkward places at awkward times with heavy objects. And um, uh, so basically, it's tough. You know, I, I'm, I'm at risk. So my superpower that I would prefer and uh, I haven't thought of the curse yet, but the superpower would be to be able to, at any point, um, I guess, telekinesis, you know, just lift heavy objects without, <laughs> without, without having to touch, you know, flinch a muscle. Um, that would be, that would be great. Um, I guess it's the curse, I mean, curse is a strong word. Maybe, I don't know, maybe every time I use the superpower, um, it takes like six hours off my life, you know, something like that. So, 
it would be there would be an incentive to use it, but there would also be an incentive not to use it. So that's, I mean, the incentive. It would, it, would, it would be one of those things where it's like you win the lottery, right? You have $16 million, you just love life. But then you're like, well, you feel a little bit like it's dirty money and you feel like you're just gonna, you're just gonna blow it all in one place. So you really don't wanna use the money. So it's like, a, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I guess. So you, you have the superpower and there's the, there's the curse that comes with it. So my superpower would be, just to re reiterate, since I have a moving company, Telekinesis, and it would take life off of my destiny, off my, my when I'm supposed to die. Um, but but the thing with with uh, yeah superpowers, I guess you know maybe they are real, but we have to just believe in ourselves for them to, to actually happen. So that's all I can. <laughs> Somebody wants to give a tour to force. Uh, uh, Manoli, when you are 80 years old, what will matter to you the most? I like to 
your um, how you changed your topic a little bit because you um, the question posed was what makes you smile and I liked how you turned it up and turned it up a little knot and you gave your opinion on how you kind of look back on your life and realize now that you're actually funny and it sounded like it was like a bit of a reflection and a, person, uh, a win that you actually enjoyed so that was nice to hear. Emery talked about his superpower. <laughs> I like how he was very creative because there wasn't much boundaries on the superpower. And so he, he realized that he could travel to different places. And it was a very creative idea because he could, he related it to his cousin, cousin I believe, who was traveling. And so he had a frequent, free frequent flying miles, which was nice. In Prana, Created, um, he used his superpower. He reflected on his own life, and he created something that was practical, so that he could move things around. I like that how you ended on a good note and said that if we believe in ourselves. That alone is a superpower. That was, that was awesome. And then my speech is all. I won't evaluate. <laughs> <laughs> moment you've all been waiting for. Which evaluators qualified today? Ryan, which evaluators qualified? Well, let's see, uh, looks like we've got Emery, Lewis, and Manoli. So please vote for Please vote Lewis for one of those. And three. Middle. Everybody qualified. Yep. Firing right off into the reports. Let's start with our timers report. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, we've got uh, Frazier, six minutes and five seconds. Leslie, five minutes and 49 seconds. Uh, and then for table topics, Jean, a minute and 49. Emery, a minute and 15. Prana, a minute and 59. Minoli, a minute. And just right on the cusp there, if you needed a little bit more tour de force than you would have. But you did make it through. You got it through just on the minute. Emery, you got two minutes and 30. Lewis, not, not on your speech. I'm just saying in terms of time. I'm sorry. I loved your speech. It was great. Lewis Denbaum, three minutes and five seconds. Minoli, um, actually lost track, but you were over the two minute mark. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Let's hear from our grammarian, Dan Craig. Mr. Toastmaster, General Evaluator. Word of the Day was fairly popular. I heard Will use it once, Emory three times. The one was cheating. <laughs> he said, I wish I could have used Tour de Force. <laughs> then Fraser used it, Lewis, Orion, and Prana. Some phrases that I heard tonight that caught my ear. At one point, Emory said, we're ready to throw a computer across the room. Fraser said, the bliss of success was out of this world. He also said, I had an app for that. Leslie said a lot of, uh, had a lot of colorful phrases. One that just caught me in the beginning was, don't play with your food. And at, toward the end, she said, I just want my friends to be with me and eat and be happy. Jean had a phrase, the whole spike of the enjoyment phase. That's a very Jean phrase. <laughs> and Manoli said that I've loved and enjoyed a beautiful, lush life. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And now for the role of shame, Gene Simonton Craig as odd counter. After I've just talked about how I like to have people feel good, and now I'm the role of shame. <laughs> That's funny, Gene. <laughs> Looking 
for ways to improve. That's all we're doing here. Will, I had one you know. I think you must have done more, but that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> Emery, seven uh, ahs, four ums, one you know, three so's, two ands, and one well. Starting a sentence with well. Frazier, one you know, four so's, three Xeroxes, where you started set. You're actually not starting, you're in the sentence, and then you start it again in the middle, and one false start. And that, I think that's where you do that at the beginning of a sentence. You start a sentence and you start it again. But I start next to Frazier because, and that's a extra kudos from in my vocabulary, because he had lots of pauses that could have been filler word traps, but he just let them be pauses, and he let the next string of what I thought was excellent word choice in his speech come forth. So that is really noteworthy in my mind. Leslie had one ah uh, or a, uh, two so's, and then there was this mouth thing tonight. We have tongue click on the form, and that's a, and actually I'm a specialist in these because I've been told I do these all the time. I think it just means you've got a talented mouth. But there's also lip smacks, sort of. And so Leslie had lip smacks. You had lip smacks. And maybe it was appropriate because you were eating, you talking about food. <laughs> maybe that's okay. But a lip smack, like that. I think it's a, like that. Ew. And that's five. Did you say ew? <laughs> ew. <laughs> All right. And then we had Lewis. Lewis had two us or us, one you know, one so, and, but he had a couple of tongue clicks, bona fide tongue clicks, which is different from lip smacks. I was really into that tonight, so he was more in the back in here. Okay. And he had one false start. Orion had four uh, us, one um, one so, prana. I, I got a lot of exercise on this. <laughs> Two, uh, three uh, uh, uhs, ahs, and four ums, one like, four you knows, three so's, one and, two false starts, and one kind of a. And I use kind of a and sort of a as, in my mind, they are quasi filler words because you're not just saying the word, you're doing a kind of a sort of a and it it's a way to fill in space and it also makes you sound a little wishy-washy when everything is kind of a sort of a, it just say what it is, that's my opinion. Manoli had two ums, three ands, and two false starts. Very good. That's it, that's my report. Thank you, Jean. Y'all still feeling pretty good here? Yeah. yeah. Hard up. <laughs> to make us feel even better than we already do, our joke master. There was an elderly couple who were very healthy. They had made it to their late 80s, early 90s because of the wife's emphasis on healthy eating. But unfortunately, they died in a car crash and they went to the pearly gates. And so St. Peter said, well, come right on in. I'll show you around a little bit. Here is your new home. And they were shown into this gorgeous mansion with a great kitchen, granite countertops, and all this. And the, the husband said, well, how much does this cost? And St. Peter said, nothing, it's free, this is heaven. And so then they looked out the backyard and there was this beautiful golf course and it changed every day into a di to mimic a different great golf course on planet Earth. And the husband said, well, what, about, or what are the green fees for this? And St. Peter said, 
no charge. You can play all the golf you want. And then they went into a restaurant, and there was this gorgeous buffet out with wonderful cuisine from all over the world. And this is fantastic, you know. Uh, is, you know, how much does this cost? Oh, that's free too. And the husband said, well, where are the, you know, cholesterol-free, sugar-free <laughs> desserts, you know, the ice cream made out of frozen okra? And <laughs> where is all this health food? And St. Peter said, well, you can eat anything you want, as much as you want, and you'll never gain weight, you'll never get sick, because this is heaven. And so the husband looked to his wife and said, if it weren't for all your health food, we could have been here 10 years sooner. <laughs> We're really big on feedback here at Golden Speakers. So this section is where, as, where the general evaluator actually evaluates the meeting as a whole and the evaluators themselves. For our, our evaluators, both use the manual, and they both made some great points to their speaker. While Emery spoke about presentational elements, for example, Fraser's gestures and how to expand them, Lewis spoke about the content, removing and organizing sections of, the, of a speech for more impact. And neither one is more important. They both go to creating the development of an amazing speech. You both captured the points that I would have mentioned if you had failed to, so uh, kudos to that. Um, just keep up the good work. You've both been doing this quite a while, and I can see why. Why we have you back here every year. Yes, Gene. Yes, Manoli's up next. Manoli, what, like table topics, the table topics evaluation is kind of off the cuff. You're just having to kind of roll with it, and you did a fabulous job without having to have like a structure there. You know, you, you found your own structure and, and were able to work with it. So good job there. And I'm going to, since you didn't get the chance to get an evaluation, I'll give you a quick evaluation of your table topics. About being 80 years old. You spoke about, about having no regrets, accomplishing your goals. I would have liked you to do one more thing. Take more risks in your table topics. I want to hear about you trudging through the jungles of the Midwest after the eastern seaboard had fallen into the ocean, and about how you lost your hand to a cyborg tiger, but it was all worth it, and you wouldn't change a thing. Or about just the losses, the victories, you have a great presence up here, and you have a very sweet nature to you. To improve the impact, take more, you know, just bring more of that up and down. Power. For the meeting as a whole, I think it went fairly well. We always do a really good job of making this all work. It's amazing how much goes on in front of the camera, behind the camera, and all around. My suggestion is that we all show up a little bit earlier so we're not rushing in here to get our, our roles and, and kind of get settled in and execute. And with that, it's my pleasure to call up nobody, myself, I guess, to do the meeting awards. Toastmaster. Toastmaster. Bill Burns. All right. It's been a great experience. I always wanted to be the master of ceremonies for a to to Toastmasters club, and I'm Glad to do it tonight. To be kind of so much to so many people, so many wonderful people. It's been quite an experience. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Emery, for scheduling me for both. I'm very yeah. <laughs> You volunteered. I did volunteer, yeah, so for giving me the chance to do this. First off, best table topics Manoli. Best evaluator, 
Lewis. Best speaker, Frazier. Oh, and sorry, Frazier, come on back up, or your body speaks. And it's my pleasure to call up Leslie for getting to the point. Number two. That's correct. We'll fix it. Okay. We can fix it all in post production. Okay. Yes. And now it's our pleasure to call up our president, Pro Tem, Emery Styron. Thank you, Will, and thank you for doing dual roles tonight. Uh, Will's just coming off his term as Vice President of Education, where he assigns all the roles, so I think he's especially empathetic for my new position in <laughs> doing that job. Um, I want to do two things here. One, I'd like to introduce our guests or have our guests introduce themselves and give us just a quick comment about the meeting while you're here and what you saw. Okay. I have to go over there? No, you're Not fine right where you are. Okay, my name is Ingrid Bianco. And I heard wonderful things about this group. I was recommended by different people. And I would like to be a member, and I would like to learn more. And I'm very conscious about my um, accent. And uh, I think it would help a group like that. Thank you. about Toastmasters from my friend Pia. She used to come here on yes. Tuesdays. Yeah, and I just came here to check it out today. Okay, we're glad you're here. And just a quick comment about being Vice President of Education. I'm learning the job. Uh, my plan is to send out a preliminary agenda each Friday morning, and I would ask you all to be watching for that on your email, and to please confirm if you expect to attend the meeting and expect to take the role you've been assigned, and if you're not able to, please let me know as soon as possible, and then I'm going to make what I would call a final, subject to adjustments, uh, agenda on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, before I come to the meeting and uh, any uh, communications I get uh, in the interim I'll put into that final agenda. Yes, Dan. Could I make a suggestion sure. or, or bring something up for discussion? Yeah. The, uh, the thing that I would suggest we might want to do is have people reply to your personal email. Because if everybody in the club's replying for every email, we're going to get a, yeah. a lot of club emails. Yeah. So what is your email? Yeah. Everybody should, should be able to. Emory Styron one at Gmail. So maybe when you ask for feedback, you could just. Yeah, I could tell, I could say you reply to this, but yeah, it, it can get uh, a little Seriously. overwhelming. Uh, uh, the the interchange of. I can be there, I can't be there. So, yeah. just for like, for like meeting roles, you know, like a thread specifically, like an email thread that like every week we just reply to that same, I don't know, something in some way, so it's not just a general email that goes with all the Toastmasters emails. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Like well, what I'm doing is you're making a thread, printing the agenda and sending it to members okay. 717515. And it, it goes to yeah. everyone. So did, did everybody reply today? Did everybody reply? Oh, I, I got a lot of replies. I think and made adjustments. Sign it. 
too, because it all looks like it's coming from the same address unless somebody puts their name on it. Yeah, if you sign it, that's that's legit, but if otherwise you can't tell who. Yeah, it actually says who is it from who it's it from, but if you look at it on an iPhone, it cuts it off. Well, <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 so I have to. Uh, so I had an um, Android device, and now I have an iPhone device, so I feel like I can talk on both of those. So the Android devices, you could, it would eventually say uh, set up your new club members or golden speakers on, on, in be, on behalf of, and it would say Prana Miller or yeah. Leslie Hunts. Oh. So you could tell who it was if you straightened it out. Okay. The iPhone, at least my, I, you know, I've turned it on, and you can't get it. So it would be really, and I'll tell you, there is one way that I just discovered, but it would really be helpful if you just said, you know, Emery or Gene or just like in the body of the email so that people don't have to go looking for it. What I found for the iPhone was that, it, you know, I, I'm looking at it, I can't tell who sent it. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm figuring it out because, um, I don't know, someone's saying I've got to go do my women's seminar or something. And I go, well, it's probably Susanna, even if it doesn't say Susanna. Yeah. But, if I hit reply, then for some reason I can see it was from Susanna, right. and I just discovered that with the iPhone. But suppose, to, and then and then I have to cancel that one because I don't want to see it really. Um, Is there like a spreadsheet? That spreadsheet? Yeah, I, I I have this trouble just, too, and I'm off looking at them on my laptop, and trying to figure out who said what. Yeah. <laughs> so just on the email, if everyone could just put your name in the email body and then that would help those of us that have you know, devices that are less than fully cooperative. And if you want to get into it, you can go into Easy Speak and request speech dates and, yeah. and confirm your attendance there. Uh, and it's not required, but it's available to you. Um, but watch for an email from me with the preliminary agendas on Fridays and uh, then I'm going to put the the finalized agenda on the email again on Tuesday afternoon when I do it, as well as bring them out and bring them to the meeting. I posted it on our Facebook page as well tonight. I don't know if anybody noticed it or if it if that has any effect, but I, I thought why not? And, uh, and then also I would be happy for uh, I want to talk to. You all of you over time about what your goals are, where you are, and when you want to be scheduled, uh, you know, face-to-face -face at meetings. I'm, I'm available before and after meetings to schedule speeches. I think uh, we have maybe Will for next week, but we could use another. And if you are working through your leadership manual, which you all should be, and you need a particular role to satisfy a leadership manual requirement feel free to tell me that as well <coughs> okay any other business or announcements meeting adjourned nine o'clock